All right, today we're going to take a look at some uh, complex numbers and some operations with these complex numbers. Now, before we get started, um, let's review if we have a complex number, all right, in standard form, it's going to look something like A plus BI. It will have a real part, which is the A, and it will have the imaginary part, which will include the I, so the BI. All right. Two uh, other important parts that you need to remember whenever you're working with complex numbers is that your imaginary numbers deal with I. And so because we have an imaginary part, we are going to have to be dealing with I. Um, a good thing to remember is that the square root of negative 1 equals I. Another good fact to remember is I squared equals negative 1. All right, now basically what we're going to do with these complex numbers is we're just going to... Um, simplify them. We're going to maybe do FOIL. We're going to do distributive property. We'll combine like terms. Anything that you can do with a standard polynomial, you can also do with complex numbers. Alright, so you might have an example of something that looks like say parentheses negative 5 plus i minus the quantity negative 11 minus 6i. Alright, this would be something along the lines of maybe just simplifying um, polynomials and they include complex numbers. All right, so you're going to go through and you're going to find some like terms. Okay, um, before I do that though, because this is a minus, if this was a plus, I could immediately go through and start finding my like terms. But since this is a minus, I think I'm going to go through and I'm going to change all the signs um, in this second quantity here so that I can drop my parentheses. So negative 5 plus i, nothing's going to change on that. Now, I'm going to, in essence, distribute a negative 1 throughout this, which changes all the signs, which is going to make that then a plus 11, and then a plus 6i. Okay, now, from here, I'm going to go through now and find my like terms. All right, my negative 5 and my 11 right there, I can put those together, and that's going to give me a 6. And then I can go through and I can put my i terms together, 6i, and then there's an imaginary one that's sitting in front of that those going together is going to give me a 7i. And as you can see, I've got standard form. I've got my a right here plus bi. So I've simplified that expression using complex numbers. All right, um, let's do one maybe that involves a distributive property. If I had one that looked like 5i, and I was going to multiply that by the quantity 3 minus 5i. All right, the parentheses should be the dead giveaway that, oh, hey, I'm going to do some distributive property here. I'm going to take that 4i and multiply it by the 3. I'm going to take the 4i, and I'm also going to multiply it by the 5i. All right, uh, multiplying here, I can multiply the 4 and the 3 like normal and just squish the i up to it, so it's going to give me a 12i. Minus sign is going to come straight down. When I multiply here, 4 times 5 is going to be 20. Now, i times i, almost just like when you've got an x, all right, is going to be i squared. All right, now, if you're simplifying all the way that you can, you've got to come back up here. Remember that we had said i squared is equal to a negative 1. So I need to take that and replace it with a negative 1 because that's what that equals. All right, if I want to show all my steps here, 12i minus 20 times a negative 1. Negative times negative is going to make that a positive. So then I have a 12i plus 20. All right, now, yes, it's been simplified. All right, but this technically is not in standard form. I don't have it a plus bi form. So I need to just rearrange those terms. 20 plus 12i, that's going to give me then a answer in standard form. So right there, all I'm doing is switching into standard form switching into standard form. A lot of textbooks require your answer to be in standard form, so that's why I just thought we'd point that out. Okay, now let's take a look at another example. If I had two quantities that I was going to be multiplying together, then I would use FOIL. So in an example such as that, I might have something like 7 minus 3i times the quantity negative 2 minus 5i. All right, this clearly is two quantities being multiplied together. So the easiest thing would be to recall that you can use FOIL on this. 
All right, so first terms, multiplying my first terms, I'm going to get a 7 times a negative 2. It's going to give me a negative 14. All right, outside terms would be taking the 7 times the negative 5i right there, negative 35i. Inside terms would be a negative 3i times a negative 2. That's going to give me a positive 6i. And then my last terms, negative 3i times negative 5i. It's going to give me a positive 15i squared. Okay, that's just straight foiling it out. From there, I can go through. I see a couple like terms right there in the beginning. All right, and then here I've got another i squared. Every time you've got the i squared in there, you've got to replace it with a negative 1. The negative 14, I'm not going to do anything with that at all. So it's just going to come straight down. A negative 35i plus a 6i, adding like terms, that's going to give me a minus 29i. All right, replacing this with a negative 1, I will have 15 times a negative 1. All right, a little bit more simplifying to clean up here. Negative 14 minus 29i, that's going to be a minus 15. All right, just one little thing there to do the multiplication in that step. All right, now I've got some like terms. A minus 14 and a minus 15 is a negative 29. And I'm going to go ahead, since I know I want it standard form, I'm going to go ahead and put that number first. Negative 29 minus 29i. I'm in standard form, a plus bi form. So then I'm good there. Okay, and then one last example um, I think I want to do. I think I want to introduce a complex conjugate because simplifying expressions, that usually comes up quite frequently. All right, so I might also have a problem where it looks something like 7 plus 4i all over 2 minus 5i. All right, overall directions would tell you to simplify. All right, now you're going to multiply by a complex conjugate. All right, now if you remember, just in general, a conjugate is where you switch the signs and multiply by a form of 1. All right, the only reason this is a complex conjugate is because I'm dealing with my complex numbers. All right, I definitely want a form of 1. I'm going to switch the sign right there, and I'm going to choose to multiply by a 2 plus 5i over 2 plus 5i. All right, and when I do that, that is our complex conjugate. Okay, just to identify what the name of it is there. Okay, now, on the top, let's deal with the top first. You got to remember that that right there is a binomial. It's a 7 plus 4i. All right, so in essence, I've got a binomial times a binomial there across the top. So I'm going to have to foil it out in my numerator. When I foil that out, all right, I'm going to do each one of the foils. I'm going to do first terms. 2 times 7 is 14. All right, then I'm going to do last terms. 7 times the 5i is going to give me a 35i. Inside terms, 4i times 2 is going to give me an 8i. And then last terms is going to give me a 20i squared. All right, now on the bottom, I would have to foil that out again. All right, however, we chose the conjugate very carefully so that it's going to come out really, really nice. All right, if you foil it out, you're going to end up seeing that there is a shortcut that we can do. All right, the, um, I can take the first number and square it for my shortcut. All right, now, even though this is forming the difference of two squares, because I've got an i squared when I foil that out, that i squared then is going to replace with a negative 1, which in essence is going to turn that middle one into a plus. All right, now, shortcut, if I just take the coefficient right there and square it, that's a nice little shortcut in getting out the denominator so that I don't actually have to foil that every time. Okay, I take the first term, I square it. I do use a plus, and then I take the coefficient and square again, this will actually work if you square that all, you know, foil that all out and do that. You're going to end up with that type of denominator. All right, now doing a little bit of simplifying here. Um, let's simplify on top. I'm going to have some like terms right here. I can put those two together, and I can replace that i squared with a negative 1. Okay, so 14, 
and then a 35 plus an 8 is going to give me a 43i. And then that'll be a negative times that positive 20 would be a minus 20. All over. Let's go ahead and do that denominator. 2 squared is 4. 5 squared is 25. It's going to give me a 29 on the bottom right there. All right, let's go ahead and combine our like terms. We've got a 14 and a negative 20. We can put those two together. And there again, that's going to be my real part, so I'm going to go ahead and put that in front where I need it. Negative 6 plus 43i all over 29. Okay, now technically there's nothing wrong with leaving that answer the way it is unless you are required to put it into standard form. If I'm going to put that in standard form, I'm just going to break that up into two fractions. I've got a numerator that's being added, so it's real easy to do that. I can write a negative 6 over 29 plus, and then I usually choose to do 43 over 29 and then pull my i out there just a little bit. Okay, the only thing going from this step to the last step right here is just I'm putting it in standard form. Depending on what might be required. Okay, so those are just a few examples of working with some complex numbers.